All right, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. I really appreciate everyone for coming by and painting along with us, drawing and painting in watercolor. We're having a great time here on this channel. And of course, this is the Extreme Beginner series. And um, again, if this is your very first time coming by to my channel, I want to thank you and say you're in a great place. We do watercolors every week here, nothing but watercolors. We do every kind of a subject matter you can imagine. We do landscapes, seascapes, beach scenes. We do um, city scenes. We do flower scenes. We do still life, you know, tea cups, coffee cups, fruit, vegetables, um, vases, flowers, all of that. We do figure painting too as well, figures, portrait work, everything in watercolor. So you're just, this is the one stop place for you to start out your watercolors and learn and grow from there. So I cover all the methods and techniques you need to learn week after week here, month after month and year after year. I'm always uh, very proud to say that I uh, teach my methods and techniques over and over and over again in each video so that you're always constantly hearing it and practicing it so that you don't forget it and it becomes part of your routine, which will, again, you'll be able to create beautiful paintings after a short time versus uh, wasting time um, on other things that are not going to really get you to the place you need to be. You need to have those fundamentals and the basics of watercolor down. So I cover those all the time in my videos. So you'll just be naturally learning them from the very beginning. So here, let's the first painting we're going to do on this series here is a landscape painting. Look how beautiful that looks. We cover all the techniques, methods here, of course, in this painting. It's a glazing technique painting, which means we're glazing with light washes of color and building up layers darker and darker as we go until we're finally done with our darkest darks in the painting. And you can see what a beautiful three-dimensional look we have with this painting. I cover all the details of how you're going to create this painting step by step from the drawing all the way on through to your final touches of uh, some little dabs of white paint on the fence posts so that you have every detail covered and you can create this painting and you can create this in this size or even larger. You can eventually work this up to a very large size painting therefore you know you can have a great time frame it put it in your place your house your home your apartment you can give it as a gift to someone absolutely beautiful exciting looking painting of a kind of an overcast um, day in the beautiful countryside with a gorgeous barn style house here we call this a farmhouse basically a farmhouse with a lake and a river and a green field here, grass and purple mountains in the background. Just a gorgeous design for a painting, lots of excitement, three-dimensional quality to it. And then on our second painting here, we're going to do two today. We're going to do a city scene. Look at how gorgeous this is. Beautiful warm and cool colors, the warm reds, browns, golds some greens and blues for the cools, warm and cool everywhere in this painting, city scene, figures in this painting, so you have some figures. I cover all the details of how you're going to create this painting as well. Everything from the start of it, drawing this painting, to the figures, the glazing, again, glazing technique. So this is the glazing technique you're doing, all the light washes first, the very, very light, light washes, very light amounts of water and paint, and then finally, Toward the end of the painting, you're doing all the darks. And then finally, we do the figures and a little bit of a detail here on a clothesline. And we talk about how to um, do some uh, extra little fix-ups here and there if you need to in your paintings. If something doesn't go exactly perfect, you can do a couple touch-ups on the clothesline and some different things like that. But overall, a really beautiful looking painting. So these two paintings you're going to do on this uh, tutorial here. Welcome aboard everybody. So let's uh, get moving. Let's start with our video and we'll start out with our first painting which is the um, landscape painting with our farmhouse and fence posts and beautiful green fields and purple mountains. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we just saw the four paintings we are going to do and uh, this is our again our Extreme Beginner series. And um, we're going to start out, we'll do our first painting, which is going to be a landscape painting with a house in the, in the top portion of the painting. And we're going to kind of cover 
just the basics of how we get to this painting. And it's basically a small composition, so with watercolor, we're just going to basically, a lot of times we're just going to focus on smaller compositions at first, especially your first couple years. Um, try some larger paintings every once in a while just to kind of get the feel for it, kind of see how it, it, it works, uh, all the moving parts work. Uh, compared to doing smaller compositions, but smaller compositions are really great to work on because it's kind of a focused area of concentration you have um, with your uh, drawing and your painting, and you can kind of just really, it's like more manageable sometimes. The larger paintings, I know when I first started watercolors, after a while I started, I, well, I started right from the beginning maybe doing some larger paintings here and there, and they, they were always way more difficult, and so that's why I say if you can do maybe smaller compositions at first, and then eventually maybe after a year, well, it's up to you. You can try bigger paintings any anytime you want, but I, I just, uh, there's a technique to it. There's a method to doing larger works, uh, larger paintings on larger watercolor paper versus doing these. And these here, smaller compositions, this is like um, uh, maybe like a five by a seven, five by seven, five inch by seven inch, you know, each uh, division here. So a little more manageable to work with, and uh, but you do what you're the artist. You branch out, do larger paintings when you want to. Uh, I'm just saying it's a little easier, I think, working on smaller focused compositions uh, in the beginning. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my um, hash marks here. Where am I going to put my um, horizon line? Where the uh, the uppermost parts of the um, mountainous areas and land are, and then where's my sky going to start and go up this way? So I think a little more than halfway is going to be good. So if this is halfway approximately, the center here is about halfway. A little bit above center should be fine. So then I'll just start there with my sketch. And maybe I'm just going to get the, the line of the, um, the distant, uh, distant hills. And then there's a, we're going to just, a small house here. So we have a small farmhouse here. We're making that small because it's in the distance. We're going to try to build a feeling of distance in this picture, in this painting. So then here we have the hills. And the hills in the distance there, they pretty much don't change. They go right a little bit. They go right across the picture. And then it angles up here a little bit maybe. Like that. So our distant hills do have a little bit of undulation to them. They're not perfectly straight across. So you just try to get a little bit of that rolling hill feel. And it ends up a little bit higher over here than over here. But not by much, maybe just a little bit. And then what we're going to do is um, we'll come over here. We'll leave a little bit of um, grass over here. And we'll make a lake in front of this house here, so this farmhouse. So the farmhouse is here. And then we're going to make a little bit of a lake here, so... I'm going to sort of make a lake over here, maybe a, just, a, just a little bit, it kind of, not too much into the picture. Maybe it, it stays it stays about where the house, where the farmhouse is. The, the lake kind of protrudes into the painting about where the, um, the farmhouse, farmhouse is here. And then from there... Maybe we're going to have an area of maybe like a river, a small river or creek running through the picture. So we're going to do that over here. And we're just going to make it like that. And then it thins out here. So it gets a little bit wider here. That'll be our creek and river. And then there's some rocks and things over here. And then over here is more of the hills. So here I'm just going to put a little small W to remember to leave that white paper. So that's going to be white paper. And the same thing over here, I'm going to leave this white paper. So I just put a light W in there and we can erase that later. Does that make sense? If you want to leave something like white paper to get a really bright look to it, like maybe something like water, we're going to make the sky very light. So we're going to want to keep the paper light where the water is. And that's the lake over here and then this creek or river over here, small river. So that's why I'll put the W in there. And then once we're done painting the darker green grasses and hills here, then we can just erase that. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think we're looking uh, pretty good. We got the farmhouse, the distant hills, the lake over here, and the river over here. And then I think we're pretty good. And then we're just going to do a couple lines 
like this just to show where we're going to kind of want to make some brush marks and some light and shadows that kind of curve around like this kind of bringing us into the picture into the into the bringing us to the farmhouse here so if we can make some brush marks and brush strokes and some light and shadow to kind of make these like little berms or little hills curving into the picture and kind of leading us over here to this farmhouse in the distance over here then we're going to have much more uh, interest and feel to this so I hope you can see that how I'm doing that I'm kind of building the painting first with my drawing my sketch lines and that's good I think we're all set here so I'm going to take a quick break once I'm done drawing I usually always take a break hope you'll do the same refresh a little bit then this way when you come back you can maybe look at your pencil drawing and say oh you know what maybe I just need to adjust like one thing or, or two at most basic thing is we don't want to erase a lot on our picture once you have it lightly penciled in, you want to just leave it that way. And if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. You know, you can always start another painting later. We'll just keep working through our paintings here as we go. And we take our time when we do our pencil drawing at first. So you can see how I did everything quick, slowly. You know, I made my farmhouse here. A little bit over from the uh, edge of the paper. Made it quite small. If it varies a little bit in size, that's okay maybe try to make it smaller than larger and then our distant hills we got in there we did our lake our creek and then our lines here on our grass and our um, uh, hills over here uh, leading us our eye into the picture over toward the um, farmhouse over here and the lake area okay so I'll be right back and I'm glad you're here and if this is your first time here ever welcome thanks so much for coming by on this channel we do everything watercolor so we'll do landscapes we do uh, seascapes and beach scenes and we'll do um, cityscapes we do still life with fruit and flat we do flower paintings we do lots of flower paintings on this channel we do figure painting with figures and portrait paintings we do everything here everything's watercolor we'll just go step by step and it's a beginners this series the extreme beginner series is for everyone that's sort of just starting out you might never have picked up art supplies before and this is the channel you're going to stick with if you're just starting out never touched any paints or paint brushes and all that because i just go step by step real slow and kind of just explain everything i'm doing here and then this is not a problem you just kind of pick it up as you go and the more you watch my videos you'll just pick up more and more and get better and better and consistently you'll improve and that's all there is to it is just consistency that's the the main thing the mother of skill uh, repetition is the mother of skill so if you're going to have skill you have to just repeat things over and over and over and over again until you just eventually become so smooth and so easy it's like effort effortless and that's basically how um painting is the more we practice the easier it gets and the more free-flowing it is and fun and it's fun in the beginning too so if you make some problem brush marks you make some mistakes you make a bad painting not a problem in the beginning you'll probably make mostly not such great paintings but a couple are going to turn out really good and you're going to be surprised because you're getting better and that's what's going to happen you you get better paintings as you go more better you know better paintings but in the beginning i made tons of crummy paintings you know lousy paintings in the beginning just I box fulls of them like you know i probably could stack two or three feet high of all the paintings i did in the beginning when i first started that were just terrible but i just kept going and going and going and that's how we do it we just keep working at it take your time enjoy have fun enjoy the process that's the main thing you'll enjoy it when you're creating better paintings no doubt you'll have more fun when you're saying wow i can do pretty much most of my paintings are coming out halfway decent and once in a while i get a really great one in the beginning you're kind of most of them are kind of not so good but you get a couple halfway decent ones in the beginning and that's great so you just enjoy that and just say hey that's the way it is in the beginning and then as you go you're going to be surprised you'll get it'll get easier and easier for you so i promise you that and if you stick here on my channel i cover all the basics all the time on every video so you'll just constantly be doing the basics over and over and over and that'll get you to where you want to go doing better paintings and that's what i want for everybody so so glad you're here and um, we'll be right back and we'll start painting all right so we're back now and we're going to actually i'm going to draw this a little darker um what i'll do is i'll zoom in i just have to remember to zoom back out again so i'll have to remember that as soon as i'm done drawing this i'm drawing it darker so you can see it a little better so we did our 
we're doing our farmhouse here. And then the hills in the background. So I'm just going to go across here and that's the land coming this way and then there's a hill in the back over here. More or less like a distant mountainous area there. And then we have another bit of mountainous area there. And then here we did our lake shape that goes over this way. And then over here we have a little bit of a um, creek or river over this way. And we put a W in there for white paper and a W in our lake for white paper. So, th so the two water areas are going to, we leave, we put a W in there saying we're going to leave that white paper. And then um, you know, we have a little more of the distant hills back over here. And then we have white sky, of course. So we're going to put some light blue, maybe some grayish colors. We're going to make this kind of a grayish, cloudy day. Why not do that? Once in a while we like to do something different here. We like to do a little cloudy day, maybe some grayish clouds and some muted greens in the fields here and browns and have some really nice colors, some nice grayed down colors. Okay, so I just wanted to do that, make these lines a little darker and I now I'll remember to zoom out. There I go. And um, we're going to start the painting. So let's use our standard, our beginner paint brushes. I usually go over them just quick so we have an idea of what we're using here. So I usually go with um, the um, Princeton Princeton Art and Brush Company. These are like those uh, wood looking brushes. This is a square brush or a flat brush. I use a Simply Simmons number no. 6 round brush. It's a good round brush. These are all synthetic hair brushes. And then this is the brush that comes with the uh, palette. The Prang Oval 16 palette. So I always go over my art supplies first. This is what the Oval 16 looks like when you see it online. Great beginner's palette. Perfect. You just spritz the paint like I'm going to do now. Two minutes before you begin painting, you just spritz the this, the, with a, a small spritzer bottle, you can get these at the uh, dollar store for a dollar, and um, you just spritz the the paints with a little bit of this water. So I'm just spritzing just a little bit of water on there, not flooding it out, just moist, you know, getting a little bit of the mist onto the paint to just moisten it up a touch, and that's good. And you'll see that's perfect. In just a minute, it's going to be all ready to paint. And again, the Prang Oval 16 set, semi-moist watercolor paints. This is my older set, uh, so I just started running out of colors, so I started a new, a new palette here. And I arranged the colors in my own specific pattern, which is warm, on the, the, warm over here on the left, and then cool on the right-hand side. So you can kind of see my colors, how I, I change them. Once I get the new palette, I pop all these out. They come right out, these paints. So these paint trays come right out and then you take them all out and you rearrange them and try to arrange them the way I have them or something similar where you kind of have your warm colors on one side and your cooler colors like your blues, greens, purples on one side and then your warmer colors, your reds, yellows, golds, brown, some of your warmer greens. Try to keep them separated and if you keep them this way, whatever way you set them up, leave them that way every time. Always set it up the same way because then you'll memorize it uh, you'll memorize the order of your paints and this way you won't be guessing where the colors are you'll just automatically go there you won't even realize it but you'll just be going right to your colors really quickly and working on your painting a lot faster when you have your colors arranged and if you keep them in the same spot all the time you'll, you'll notice you'll you'll just memorize where they are so that is a real good thing to remember and you're the artist you have to set them up the way you want to the way you want to arrange your colors that's fine however you want to do it and uh, let's start out. I think I'm going to use to start out with my uh, Simply Simmons round brush here. I think I'll do this in a glazing technique fashion. So I'm going to go with um, maybe some lighter colors first. I'm going to go with this. Um, this is like a, a black. So I'm going to go with some black paint there. I have fresh clean water in my water bucket. And then I have, um, I usually leave a sponge next to my water bucket or some paper towels and then I just tap my brush on the, once I rinse my brush off, I tap some of the water off on the tissue or the paper towel or a small sponge just so that I take off some of the water. I don't want the water flooding everywhere into my paints and all over my paper. I want to keep my 
brush a little bit dry. You know, I don't want to keep it too wet. So you just, you rinse the brush off, you tap it on the sponge or some tissue, and then you go in and get your colors, and then a little bit of brown, and I think that'll be, look good, a little bit of blue. So I'm going to use some blue and some brown in my, uh, my black color, maybe a little more blue. I think it still needs a little more blue. Okay, that looks pretty good. A little more. That's looking better. A little more blue. That looks better. That looks good. That looks like a, uh, like a Pines Gray. And then what I'm going to do is take just a little tiny bit of it like this. So what we're looking for here is a really light amount of it. I had some purple in there. Um, that's when if you if you find you have a color that by you know for some reason a color was left in your palette and you didn't see it and it got into your paint just no sweat use a small piece of paper towel and then put another put another bit of I want to wash this down a little bit with more water so I'm just going to keep dipping my brush into my water pail bringing over some water you could also spritz some water in there with the spritzer, however you like to do it. But the key is we're doing the glazing techniques. We're going to do lots of light washes and then go over with darker washes. So here I'm going to just do a nice light wash like this. Maybe I'll add a little bit of water to the paper too, fresh clean water. Yeah, I think that's going to look good. Like that. And trust me, we're going to layer these colors. So... Um, your first wash, you just go really, really light, really, really light, like this, and you can even do the same thing. Let's do some, some very, very grayish wash here, and we'll do those, we're going to follow those pencil lines. Let's scrub on the paint like this with your brush. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just going to get some lines on there with a little bit of that gray wash like this. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Just get some in there like that and remember we leave this area white we, we leave that white too there and along there okay and now you can see we're building some layers here we're layering the colors the first wash super super light maybe I had just a touch more dark up there but that's all. That's it. So right now, you, all we're going to do is let this dry. Um, the only thing I might do is um, maybe I might add a little bit of grayish color to this lake over here. And maybe a couple little tiny spots in here of gray color. Just like that. A little touch of spots. And that's it. And then what we'll do is we'll let this dry 100% and then we'll erase those W's. But this is where you have to let the paper dry 100%. Okay, so we'll be right back. We'll let this dry and we'll come back. All right, we are back again, everybody. I hope we're having fun. Are you having fun yet? <laughs> Excellent. Hey, I always mention too on my videos uh, once in a while, um, I just say, you know, feel free if you, um, you know, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, it's a really an excellent thing. You'll get my videos all the time. You'll be alerted when they come out and this way you won't miss any fun that we're having here doing our video videos, especially our extreme beginner videos. It's as easy as just clicking on the subscribe button down on the right hand side of the screen and if you click the notification bell, all notifications, it's the top bell. That just means that um, you'll just be alerted each time a new video comes out that, that, that we're making on, on YouTube. And that's all there is. There's nothing else to it. No gimmicks. You don't get any emails or phone calls or text messages or anything silly like that. It's just YouTube's way of saying, hey, you like Chris's content, you like his videos, we're going to let you know on YouTube. When you open up YouTube and you're watching YouTube, you'll just see a little uh, bell that says, you know, Chris has made a new video. That's all it is. And it helps me too. It helps my uh, channel grow. So I hope you'll help me. Uh, I help you to help uh, me. So I help you paint. And if you help me by clicking on subscribe, we both work. It works out great for all of us. So thanks so much. And thanks for all the thumbs up too. Thumbs up really helped me a lot. As well as your comments, which are great comments. Everyone's leaving fantastic comments in the comment section. Uh, I appreciate all the kindness and kind things you say to me and give me all that encouragement. It really keeps me excited about painting on YouTube. And so uh, I'm so happy to be here and painting with you. And uh, we're learning together all the time. 
So we're going to continue on here. And again, we mentioned the main thing is when we do this first light wash of uh, some of that black mixed with some blue and some just a very, very little bit of brown, mostly black and the bl blue, we get that nice Payne's gray looking color. If you're kind of familiar with maybe some other colors, Payne's gray is like a very popular color. Almost all watercolor artists have that in their palette. Payne's gray, which is kind of a bluish black. A gray comes out to look, be looking like a gray pretty much. Uh, when you use it with a lot of water. So that's what we did here. We kind of mixed our own Payne's Gray with these colors. So you can do that. You can mix all of the popular colors you'll see out there with these colors in this palette as well. Um, so, and I'll explain how I do that each video. And um, so does that make sense about letting this dry 100%? Because now that it's dry 100%, we can use our um, kneaded eraser and we can erase that W here and over here. Now, if any of you ever tried erasing with damp paper or wet paper, you'll know what, what I mean. You have to let the paper dry 100% before you ever use your eraser. You have to have your paper 100% dry because it'll just tear the paper and ruin your paper and ruin your painting. So always remember, if you put little helpful uh, insignias on your paper to remember to leave white paper here and there, wherever it is, the only time you can erase it now, once you've done that, is when the paper is 100% dry. Because if you do this and you go across any damp or wet paper, it'll tear the paper on your watercolor painting. And that'll look just terrible. You'll have to actually throw it away because it'll look so bad. And um, that's it. Comes off really easy, though, once the paper is 100% dry. And uh, we're all set and ready to go for our second glazing or our second wash. I think our sky is going to pretty much stay the same. We might add a little bit of orange to it. But that might be later. Let's get our green grasses and purple mountains in. So let's get some purple here mixed in with some of that gray like that. And then again I rinse my brush, dry off a little bit of the water on the tissue or a paper towel or a sponge, and then just get a little bit of water in here. You can see there's not tons of water flooding around. Can you see that? I've just got a little bit of water in these washes. They're a little puddly here because we're doing light washes, but I don't flood my palette at all with a lot of water. And then here we're going to do this purplish mountains in the back. That'll give us that nice feel of distance in the back, purple mountains and hills. And I'm just going to go across easy. I have my hand on the paper at all times. So always remember that when you're painting watercolor, my techniques, mostly when I teach uh, newer students our Extreme Beginner series, you're always going to see that when I'm painting, I'm using a very, very firm, tight technique where I have my hand on the paper at all, at all times while I'm using my brush and even my pencil too. So I have my hand on the paper resting down and then when I touch my brush to the paper, then I just slide my hand very lightly across to the right while my hand's lightly on the paper now resting on the pad of paper. And that's how I get my brush stroke nice and even smooth and it's not going off in 15 different directions see I just do it nice and easy and you can even hold your hand down and move your you can keep your hand in one location and move your brush quite a good distance maybe an inch and then you have to slide a little more and then you can move more but you can kind of see how it's kind of like you can do about an inch or two actually if you really stretch out you know you can stretch out you can get a lot by hardly moving your hand at all on the paper but that's technique you have to practice at it it does not, you know, you can't do this overnight. It takes practice. Just keep doing the practice. That's all. So I'm just showing one of my techniques here, keeping the hand firm on the paper. And then you can, you can come all the way across here. Then you have to lift your hand a little slide across and go again. And that's how you do it. And you can do a nice, great purple mountain right across the back there of the painting in the far distance. And that's going to dry lighter. Always remember, watercolor dries lighter. So you put it on a little darker and it's going to lighten up about half. So if you put something on that's really, really light, it's going to even lighten up a whole lot more. You'll notice this will dry up pretty, pretty light once it's dry. So, okay, now we're going to go with our greens. We're going to start doing some really, really light greens. I'll mix some of those greens with that little bit of leftover gray. And I think this is good. Maybe a little bit of gold, that yellow, lemony yellow and some greens. Let's see what we can get with this. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Rest my hand on the paper. 
maybe we'll do some over here. Start over here, hand on the paper, and then just slide across really easy, like that. And then maybe another bit here, like that. And you can kind of see we have the beginnings of our grass and hills over here. And again, we're doing this in glazings. And now I'm going to start to move my brush around a little bit. Scrub around on there. Put some over here, too. Okay, so that's all. And we leave some of those little bit of bits of white. Can you see how I've left those little bits of white in there? If I zoom in a little bit, you'll see. I've left little tiny little bits of white lines. So I left little spaces in between the purple mountains and the green. And that just gives us a little more interest. Like it looks like there's more layers to things going back into the painting. I'm going to zoom back out again. Okay, so we're doing our light wash of green. So it's that lighter green in the, this is like a, a, a leaf green or an olive green with a little bit of gold, like yellow, lemony yellow. And then we just sort of got that going on to the paper here. And then we spin around. So I'm going to start to do my lines, my directional lines like this. So I'm just curving around. That's all. Now I'm using more of a, um, I'm holding my brush off the paper a little bit. I'm not really resting my hand on the paper too much because I'm just holding the, the brush really hard on the paper and just spinning it around like this. I'm just making some brush marks and I don't have to worry too much. I can just throw them on like this as long as I know I'm not going into that lake where that white paper is. I want to make sure I'm leaving that the white paper for the lake. And then I do this here. And we're just doing those lines like this, right around. Like that. And later on we're going to cover, fill it in more. So it looks a little odd right now, but it will look better in a little while once we go over more layers. But this is just the glazing technique. We're just layering the colors and the washes. So the final look will be when we're done with the final washes on top. Does that make sense? So don't worry how it looks when you're doing these lighter washes. Just keep layering them like this. Leave lighter and dark areas like we're doing because that's going to be our curves and um, lines that will lead us into, the, into this barn over here, to the uh, farmhouse. That's all. And then we do that. All right. We're going to do the same thing now. We're going to just take a quick break. I'm just going to actually use the blow dryer and dry this off quick, but I'll do that off camera and I'll just take a break. I'll shut the camera down for just a second, the video, and I'll be right back. Okay, I used the blow dryer just to dry off a little bit. 100% dry right now. There it is. Then we go here. We're going to get a little bit of that grayish color. Let's, let's do the roof here on the the barn like that and um, I think we can do the little bit of orange for the sky now just a very very little bit of orange you can see Just like that. Okay, and I did a little bit of scrubbing with my tissue. You can do that too if you want, but I wouldn't suggest that. I would say just let it be with that little bit of orange wash on there. And again, we're doing this in layers, so you're going to see we're going to have it... We're going to make it look really good as we go, as we build up the layers. Alright, so... We're going to go a little darker now here. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of that purple. Two, maybe over here. I'm going to take that purple color 
and then dry my brush off on the tissue so that I have very, very little purple, but just some a little bit on there. It's where the water is. Just to have a little bit of that on there. And maybe there's a little, little bit of shadow uh, reflection there of the barn. Like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. I have a bit of a cold. I, I'm sorry if I coughed on, on the camera here on the video. Okay, so there we have it. And let's get some more uh, gold. So now we're going to start gold and um, green. Maybe some darker green. Let's do some darker green here. A little bit of brown. Green. Gold. Okay, so now we're going to start getting some more darker colors. Wow, look at that. Isn't that great? We're going to start to get, and we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to just hold our brush and swing swing the brush strokes around like this and do that and just kind of there we go and swing the brush strokes around and then maybe we'll add some blue and there we have it now you can get some of those darker colors in there and then you can swing them back in too like that And you can mix up some greens and browns. You can start to get a little darker now. And, and then I just wanted to layer it before. Just so we had those layers of colors. And now you can kind of see. It's all coming together. Like that. We're going to leave it just like that. And you, if you can imagine, we're going to actually go over it again with another layer of color. Here. We're going to go with some more gold and orange, like that. Like that. So I just added some more gold and orange. And I try to get these lines in along the tape. So when you lift up your tape, you want it to be nice, like a good crisp line there. So don't worry about that. Just make sure you, you try to get that tape line um, covered good. So that when you lift up your tape, it looks good and finished, like a finished line. And that looks good. And then we're going to go with some gold. Some gold and some light green. More gold here. I'm going to try to get this a little lighter so I rinse off and try to. I'm going to try to get, make it a little bit more lighter green there. That looks pretty good. Then again, if I need to clear off a spot on my palette, good. Now this is a little bit of a cloudy day, so I don't want to go too bright with my colors, but still this looks kind of good with a little bit of that lemon, just that lemon yellow in a few spots here and there. And then some of that green we can mix in there too. And again, I'm just always doing those round, round cur curved lines this way. And I think that looks good. You can smooth out some areas if you think it looks too. You can always smooth out a little bit as you go, kind of get a little more blending. But I think that looks pretty good. Once it dries, I think you're going to see that it looks pretty good. I'll get a few more darks over here, maybe some rocks along here. We'll put a little, few little darker darks over here, some rocks and things on the on the shoreline where the water is, the river. There's a little creek here. Some rocks there, maybe some rocks over here too. Some little dots, just make little indications. Does that make sense? Indications of some rocks. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Little 
tiny dabs of spots. Bigger rocks over here, tiny, tiny ones with the very, very tip of the point of the brush, barely just little tiny specks like that over here along this area. And then over here, same thing, tiny little specks of rocks. That goes a long way, making little tiny details like that. Really does look good. Kind of finishes everything up. And then here in this far distance, you wouldn't see any rocks or anything because it's so far back in the painting. It's like a mile away over there or a half a mile approximately. So you won't see any rocks back there. Just the purple mountains. And then here we have the, let's make some windows. I think we're coming to a conclusion here. So we have for this part, we're going to do some windows here on our, our uh, farmhouse and a door. Maybe there's a door here. And we're making these colors light too. This is a little bit in the distance. You know, it's in the middle distance. It's like in the middle of the painting. So you figure this house is about uh, a quarter of a mile away from us, or not even, maybe an eighth of a mile away from the where we're standing. And then uh, about a half a mile away or a quarter mile away is the edge of this uh, river bank here. And then as you go back into the mountains there, that's like a mile or two away. So you can see how we've built a beautiful amount of distance in this painting, and that really gives it such a, an incredible look. Uh, having having a, a three-dimensional look to your quality to your paintings will really enhance the beauty of it and the excitement of it. You'll see that once you do this painting and you finish, you'll look at it and go, wow, I can't believe it, how good it looks. And um, that's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I think if anything we could do, I'll say let's leave it like this. We could do a few things. We could do... I think we could do some, maybe some fence posts, maybe. That might look good. Kind of, because this, this giant bit of grass and hills here, and these little grass grass areas, it looks a little bit like there's not enough uh, of detail in here. that It just kind of doesn't look as good as it can look. So let's try. First, let's take a break. I'll come right back, and we'll do some, maybe some fence posts here, leading our eye into the painting. And then once we do that, you'll see it even enhances the painting uh, to a whole new level. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're starting back up again. And um, we discussed uh, right before we finished uh, our last little segment here. Do you remember that, what we said? We kind of were talking about how um, this large green grass area is kind of like a little boring. It's it's a large area of the painting, and yet it's just grass and a little bit of mud and some directional lines, lines which look great. Again, we're trying to lead our eye into that uh, section of the painting over here, which is our uh, farmhouse. So we, we created our farmhouse there. And... Um, well, we need a little more something here, and I guarantee you once you see me do this, you're going to say, yeah, that, that really does make a huge difference, so let's try it. I'm going to make some fence posts. I'm going to pencil the lines in first, and we'll make them a dark color. I don't think, um, I think a dark color will look good. Dark will be very noticeable and look really good, but it won't be too bright. Like if we made them white, it might look like it's taken over the painting. So let's, um, I'm going to start out with one fence post, let's say here. So this one here I'm going to make like that. And then we'll make another one here. So they're going to stay. They're going to stay the same height this way. They're just going to get smaller uh, this way. So you might just say, you could take your pencil line and just make a curved line across the picture like that. And then you can barely, barely see it. But I have that line there. I can see, and that's where I'm going to make my uh, my other fence posts. And they're all going to be at the same top height. And I make them a couple this way, a couple that way, like, you know, a couple st standing straight, a couple. And then as they go into the distance, they just get smaller and smaller, and they get closer and closer together. And then once they go over here, they're very, very small, and barely we can barely notice them. So now, to make our fence posts, let's just get some black and add that to our blue, I mean our uh, brown. Brown, blue, maybe a little bit of red, and some black, and uh, some orange, more red, and then we're going to dry off our brush on a piece of tissue. 
We don't want too much paint on there, but you can see how thick that paint is. That paint is super, it's just basically straight paint. With that little bit of spritzer that we started off with, you make this paint really thick. It, it can't be puddly like this. You see how that's puddly? Like that, it's gotta be super thick. No, no, it's no puddles like that at all. Just super thick paint, straight paint. And then, you know, you dry off, you load up the brush, put tons of it on the brush, dry off the brush on a tissue just a little bit so you don't have too much on there. And then we just start right here and we just go right down the paper and go one there, another one there. And I'm just following my pencil line that we've just had. You know, one goes this way, one goes that way. It doesn't, they don't have to be all the same. And they get thinner and tinier and skinnier as they go until eventually you can barely see them. And that's how we leave it, like just like that. And maybe one more here, like that. And one larger one like that. This one here will make a little bit thicker. So we make them a little thicker over here in the front. And then as they go into the distance, they get thinner. So that's all. And just like that. Perfect. Now, does that look a lot better? I think it does. And then to just make it even more exciting, we're going to do a little bit of white paint. So that now I'm going to take some titanium white. You can get this in a tube, a small tube of titanium white paint. Any white paint will work. Um, I will make sure that I clean my palette off just a little bit. I want to clean a section of my palette for just the white we're going to mix now. So I'm going to just clear out a little bit of palette, a little bit of uh, yellow, a little bit of yellow and uh, brown to make like a yellow ochre looking color, yellow and brown, yellow and brown, touch of orange. That kind of looks like yellow ochre. Then I dry off my brush. We put some white paint on there like that. No water, just paint. No water, just paint on this part too. Same as the dark brown fence posts. And we take that white paint, mix it in with a little bit of that golden color, golden brown color, like that. And then we get our brush, load it up with that color, like that. We dry off a little bit on a uh, paper towel or a tissue. And then we'll really dry it off a lot. We don't want hardly any on there at all, but just a little bit. And then we try it out. We're going to try to do some, some wires here, like this. And we just try to swing them across like that. And then over there we can barely see them. Like that. Another here, a couple there. And we dry off again, 100%. Almost, just a little bit left on there to get the smallest bit of... Then we can take um, our finger and just blot up a little bit of, you know, kind of... Once in a while don't be afraid to go in there and scratch a little bit at your painting with your fingers or the brush and just mellow out a couple, you know, scrub off a thing or two. Okay, and then maybe just another little bit of touches of white paint here on the tops of the posts. There we go. Just a dab or two right there on the tops of those posts will really bring that to really excellent um, excitement. There we go, a couple of spots, just tiny. And as they go off in the distance, you can only put specks of paint on there. You can't do anything more than that, but if you can get those little, couple little specks of paint on there, on the tops of those posts, that really makes it look good. And then we can get that straight paint like that. Like that. And then it's a cloudy day, so we're not going to have too much shadows here. So I'm not even going to worry about the shadows on these things. We could add a little shadow, maybe a little purple with that brown. And maybe a little shadow here. Maybe there, it's high noon, so there's just a little bit of shadow going this way here. Like that. So maybe a little bit of shadow. Just a little small shadow underneath the posts. Those will dry, those small shadows. OK, 
Okay, and then maybe a little shadow over here on the house. Let's do it. Since we're going to put in a shadow, might as well. Like that. And you can just see I'm adding in a couple shadow spots under the uh, gable here of the roof, under here. I'll go with that darker kind of shadow there. Over here too as well, so there's a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, add a, adding some shadows will look good. And then we can even add some shadow of the wire. So I pick up some of that purpley brown, dry it off on a tissue or sponge or paper towel. And you can even just do a little tiniest bit of light uh, shadow there across the bottom. Just a couple spots like that. That just has some fun with your imagination when you're looking at it. You're kind of seeing some shadows from the wire on the ground as well as the posts. The sunlight is high in the sky. So that's all we remember is on this painting. The sunlight is high in the sky like this. And you could even say uh, midday. Midday. I'll get, we can't see that. Let me back out the camera a little bit. There we go. So I just put my light insignia on the top here. And I just put the notation midday. We're making little notes for ourselves with our lines on our painting. Hash marks as we go when we're first designing it. And now we, you can see the completed painting. It looks really great. Um, we're going to do an easier one next. I know this one was really kind of intensive. But I wanted to start out right out of the gate here and make sure that we did some impactful work here. This is really an incredible painting. This is one you can try over and over again until you really perfect it to your own liking. You can do this in different colors, fall colors. Uh, this is like a, a cloudy day. You can do a sunny day and maybe change up things. You have to kind of plan it out. How would it look in a sunny day with this uh, landscape painting with the barn in here and everything, the uh, farmhouse. Okay, so you got to game plan things before you paint, but you can, again, change the, the look of this by just adding some different colors and thinking about different times of year, maybe. Maybe you can make this a snowy painting with snow on the ground and use the fence posts and you have really cool shadows on the snow. It's all up to you. <clears throat> Let's take a break. I'll come right back and we're going to start our second painting, okay? Okay, we're going to come back and do a little more painting. Let's do one more painting. I thought we were going to do four here, but we can't go too nuts today. We have to kind of keep it, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, reasonable here. So we've completed one really beautiful painting. I think this is really just a great, awesome looking painting. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun doing that one. And then this next one here, I'm going to just to tidy up my palette here. I'll leave my white paint there. I'm going to get the rest of this here cleaned up so I just use a paper towel, damp paper towel and just remove all the paint that we used for the first painting so we can just start a new painting and new fresh paints and we don't have to worry too much so that's pretty good and um, I think this one here we're going to do a streetscape so we're doing a landscape here next we're going to do a street scene so um, we're going to keep it somewhat simple this is not going to be a real um, challenging uh, street scene. We're going to kind of keep it simple. We're going to make like an arched doorway. So, and um, what else are we going to do here? Yeah, let's just make it a street with some figures in an arched uh, doorway. So I'm going to make a sidewalk about an inch up from the bottom of my tape. So we can always take our tape and say, all right, there's our rectangle. I like to always really press press hard on your tape right around where the paper is. Um, I wouldn't press the tape hard everywhere but just right where it meets the paper, the edge of the paper, the edge of the tape. Make a good seal there so no paint leaks under it. Makes a much better uh, border around the uh, painting once you lift up the tape. And then here again I'm going to just go around so we have our rectangle. We can see we're dealing with this picture space here. This is our frame. 
we're going to go with maybe an inch high of a sidewalk, like across, so, like so. Then now, halfway up between the sidewalk and the top of our painting, we're going to make an arch doorway, which would be like the archway going into a beautiful apartment building or an, you know, some kind of um, special um, auditorium or a concert hall, or you could kind of create your own ideas with the, with your imagination. But I'm going to make this like um. I'm going to make this a first. Let's make a square, a rectangle, I should say, like that. Then on top of that rectangle, we just put a arch on top, like so. So that's all. We're just going to make a, a rectangle first, and then an archway. And then sometimes you know you can find things like a coin, um, or anything like that, or something round. And you can use something round to make your arch, so you can get a really good arch. You can find something round that fits, like a, a quarter, or a diamond, nickel, or whatever you're in every in your country. If you have metal coins that you have, you can use metal coins or other things, um, caps caps to things um, to make um, this round half moon, like so. And then. Um, this is all going to be dark in here, so we can just kind of hash that like that. That's going to be dark, reddish brown, um, kind of a dark um, entranceway into the building. And then we're just going to make some some interesting architecture here. So you don't have to get too fancy. I'm just going to make there's some stonework around the arch, and they're like keystones that are in the that are in the, um, and then there's like a um, stone um, border that goes around this. So I'm just making that stone border around the arch. You can kind of see that. I'll zoom in just a little bit. I just have to remember to zoom out. So while we're, while we're drawing, I can zoom in a little more. So you can kind of see that. So I did the archway here, and then above the archway, there's a um, there's a balcony up here. So, and then along the archway, about the thickness, not quite the thickness of the arch, but close to it, we have two walls that come up straight. So again, you're just penciling in some lines. So we're making two two lines just to go across here. There's a balcony up top. And um, what else do we have? We have two windows that are at the same height as the arch over here. Two windows like this that come across. You can use a ruler too if you want. So don't don't be afraid to use a ruler to get some things straight. So we can take our ruler like this and say, okay, the top of the arch is the top of the windows on either side of this kind of like square box that's here. So there's like a square with an arch and then there's two windows on either side and then the windows are like so. And they have they have um, moldings and um, raised stone features around them. So it's going to look interesting when we're done with this. I think it'll look fantastic. So we have two windows here. Again, this will be dark, so I can put some lines in there like that. That's going to be very dark. This might be some, there might be some uh, shades in there on this one. And then uh, we will have, the balcony is, the balcony's up here. And it's, it doesn't go, it goes about halfway across here. So the balcony ends about the center of this here. So if you can see that, the center of this wall here. So this is another window here. And this is a window here. This is a wall and a wall. And then at this wall, the center of that wall is where the balcony is. So then we just make the balcony across here doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to make some balustrades, so some ballast, balusters. 
and then and then we just make some lines like this and we'll paint those in later but just so we get some lines in like this going across and then on top of that more window these are doors these are actually like um these look like um like large doors that, where you can walk out onto the balcony and there's a wall in between the two so these are here I made one too thick and one too thin let me get my eraser that's better there we go so these are even so you can kind of see now you can do this much more loosely don't don't get as detailed as I'm doing it if you don't want to but you can kind of see how I'm just lining everything up like the center of this wall here this is a window window wall 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 over here and then this is the arched uh, doorway into the building this center line of this wall here is the edge of the balcony here and the same thing would be here the center of this wall is the edge of the balcony here and then these are the two large doors that are that are uh, for the balcony so people can walk out on the balcony and um, get some fresh air and uh, look out over the street and then I think for that that's good for there and then the windows above these on the second floor are the same thing they are a little bit higher than the bottom of the balcony so I'm going to start on there That's a window there, and then we go across here, follow that same line across, and again, if you want to use a ruler to get things even, you just say, okay, the bottom of these windows, these two windows over here, are going to be just a little bit above the balcony uh, floor. And then we do that, and it's in line with this. So this window up above this window, the second floor windows are up here, and they're in line with these. And there's some shutters on these, like that. And then there's shutters there, and there. And I'm going to not be perfect about it, don't be perfect with this. But just kind of see how I'm getting things located where they are. So within this rectangle, everything is fine now. We have everything there. Then from this window over here, we have a little bit of a clothesline connected. So this person is putting out some clothes and things, towels, like that. So there's some clothes lines there. And on top of these windows there's another water table, stone, stonework. That's a water table there. Okay. And that is good. And then the last thing we're going to do I'll sharpen my pencil just a little bit. I'm going to just create some figures here. So maybe we're going to have some figures outside. They're about... We're going to make carrots. Basically use, use the carrot feature. The carrot technique. To make some really good figures in your, in your um, paintings. Um, you just pretend you're drawing a carrot. And it really works great. I use this when I do a lot of my landscapes. I'm trying to find a piece of paper here to kind of just do, do a quick rendering. So when we're doing a um, when we're doing some figures in a uh, landscape painting or a streetscape street scene, you know, figures are pretty much, you know. They're kind of like carrots, basically, right? So if we saw a carrot like this, figures are like carrots. They get, they're wide at the top with the, you know, the top on there, and they come down to a point where the feet are. So that's all you have to remember. Think of a carrot, kind of draw a carrot first, and then you can make, you know, or, you know, kind of loosely 
tra trace a carrot onto your paper, and then you just put on the um, the head and the feet, and you're all set. And that's what I did here. Carrot, head, and then there's another person here standing next to that person, another carrot. And then you can put some feet there. You don't even have to worry about the feet on the... Uh, figures and then you have maybe another small child there so it's just a tiny carrot there for a child like that and so you have two two parents maybe they're with their child they're at the on the street scene here then maybe there's another couple figures over here you know maybe this one's in motion they're walking but again the same thing carrot shape like that and then maybe another Maybe another child over here too. So you have, that's all. And then we'll paint those in. And that's all we need. And then now we're gonna take a break. We'll come back and um, start painting. You'll be surprised. Um, the drawing takes the longest. Th does that make sense? You're the artist, you have to remember that. Your pencil drawings and things like that, you have to take breaks. I went through this pretty quickly. Take breaks, maybe break it down into three parts. Maybe get this done in three parts. Or if you want to make it even more simple for you know for yourself, if you're just starting out and you don't want to get into all this detail, maybe just make it one simple feature. Maybe make it the one square here with the arch and a couple figures next to that. Try that first. Then maybe you know a week or two or a month from now, maybe then you try a little more of it. And if you do it and maybe you, you branch out and do it a little bit larger each time, the first time you just do the square with the arch doorway and some figures, then maybe the next time you add on a couple of the windows, practice that, do another one like that, another composition. And then maybe your third time you're doing your composition, you add in all of the windows and then the second floor too, up here with the, um, uh, the balcony and then maybe the clothesline here and the windows and shutters. So again, don't overwhelm yourself. If it's too much in the beginning, just simplify things. Just break it down and say, you know what, I'm just going to do one thing. I'm just going to do the stone um, wall here with the arch door and some figures. And you just put that onto your paper and leave the rest of your paper just white paper. Or you can make it really large. But you, you make the decision on that. If you want to do all this detail or not, no problem. Um, but I think I've explained it pretty clear here how to draw everything. It's pretty simple. You can kind of see the scale of everything. It's like basically, uh, you know, an inch up from the bottom is the sidewalk. And you can bring the figures down a little more onto the sidewalk, maybe. Like this. Um, you know, so you can do that. You can make the sidewalks like this with the directional lines. So you decide how much you want to do, how much or little, or you might want to just skip this one. You might not like this one so much, but you really rather do this one. H have fun with it. Just enjoy. Have a good time with your paintings, with your drawings. Um, we'll do this one next. We'll paint this one next, and I'll, I'll kind of show you how you don't have to go so serious when you're painting this. You can go a lot looser and a lot more fun with your painting of this. But when you do draw it, you kind of have to, uh, you know, slow it down just a little bit. Kind of go, go with the brakes on a little bit to get the drawing done, you know, somewhat accurately, if you can. Then once you get into the painting part of this, you can go a little more fun, a little more free, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that next, okay? So, we'll be right back. Okay, we're getting started again, everybody. Um, so we're going to paint this. I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to take the approach that... Um, for this is glazing technique again, same as this, glazing technique, first glazing. What we'll do is we'll use our um, flat brush here, I think. And what we're going to do is try to mix up our colors, um, lots of colors, light washes. I'm going to clean, uh, dump, dump my water in the, in the water pail. I have a, I actually have a, a pail next to my art, in my uh, studio here next to my art table. It's a large, like, five-gallon bucket. So whenever I'm done with my uh, watercolor, uh, the water here, you see how the water's kind of murky looking and muddy looking? I always change my water at least, like, two or three times during a painting. Most times. 
So whenever my whenever the water gets muddy looking, I'm gonna put it into the water bucket. I put it into the water bucket, start out with a clean bucket here. If I run out of water, I usually have bottled water or, or nearby. I'm always drinking water. It's refreshing, it's good. I drink lots of water. So I pour some bottled water. If I run out of, I usually have a large container of water, like an orange juice container like this at my uh, studio table, my uh, video table here that I create all my videos on YouTube. And then if I run out, I have no worries. I don't have to worry about going downstairs. I can just grab a bottle of water because I have a case of water all times in the uh, studio here. And um, I'm going to start out fresh, clean water. I'm going to go into my palette and I'm going to say I want to make lots of interesting colors in this, this painting. So I'm going to start out with some orange. It's a warm painting, a sunny day, sunny day street scene. I'm going to go with orange and some dark orange, orange, dark orange, red, some red there, some brown. So those are more of the darker colors than maybe, uh, let's see, a little bit of the red there, some of that. Um, rose kind of red, like a rose matter or lizard and crimson. And then there's some golden colors there. And then maybe we're going to have go with some brownish yellow ochre kind of colors. Yellow and burnt umber and yellow makes a good um, yellow ochre. Raw sienna kind of look. Um, we have that pinkish color and some reds. And then some, we need some greens too. So I'm going to put some greens up here. Those are our cooler colors in this painting. The, the greens a little bit and the blues. A little bit of the blues there. So I'm just mixing up some of them blues and greens. Those are going to be in the painting as well. And we'll have some, dark, but we're going to do the light washes now. So the key to this is, again, with the glazing technique. And, and as, Now, do you recall when we did this painting here, the, the top painting? We did the light, 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 super light washes first over the whole picture. Then we let that dry 100%. So now we're going to do the same exact thing. We're doing the glazing technique here on this painting. And sometimes you notice we do the a la prima method, which is when we paint all at one time and we don't do the washes first and let it dry and all that. We just kind of start in one place and work around the painting until it's completed. And that's... I like that method. A really, I like that method a lot, but I also like the glazing meth method a lot too. So I like both both methods, glazing and the alla prima. So, but uh, let's do these both in the same the glazing technique. So let's. I'm going to start uh, just putting on some, like this, cross hatches like so, like that. I noticed I had some some uh, other splotch of color there. There was a little mess of color there. Not a problem. You can always wet it and lift it up and you don't even see it. And then we're going to do some golden colors. And then I'll take some wet water and just kind of just cross hatch some gold. Maybe even a little bit of that really yellowy color. The yellowish lemon yellow. And the basic thing is just use the cross hatch. Use this Flat brush, like this, like this, and we're just going to build up the glazing in the in the uh, the layers, and then there's some there's some green there too. I'm going to take some of that green, put some of that green here and there, just to get some of that cooler greenish color going on. A little splashing. You can do some splashing too. These are stone buildings. So add some te texture to it. It's got some good texture with the paper too. You can kind of see that paper looks good. So you can scrub around too. You can do some finger painting if you want, like that. And then uh, we do some mixtures of all the colors maybe together, just like this. And just like that. Just like that there. And then you just, yeah, you just cross hatch everything like that. Then you just, 
And that's all you have to do. And that's the first glazing, and that's it. And if you want, you could, you might lift up some spots and make them lighter. Like maybe that's a little bit lighter, this, this stonework over here. So I'm going to make this stonework over here a little lighter. So you can see I'm dabbing up the paint there right around this archway. And then maybe over here too, there's some brighter spots. But other than that, we're going to leave everything the way it is. We wanted a good light uh, glazing of color. Some beautiful, all the colors, the beautiful, the greens, the golds, the yellows, the reds, the oranges, the rose reds. Everything is in there. On that first glazing, you let this dry 100% and then we'll come back and we'll start filling in the darks. And you'll notice that, wow, is it going to look so incredible once we start putting in the dark darks of this painting. The archway, the windows, the windows up top on the second floor, the balcony area. You're going to see how this will really transform into an absolutely incredible looking painting for you. And it's just a composition too, so always remember, don't worry about it. This is not, you're just practicing your compositions here in a smaller format focusing in on your energy on the um, smaller composition where you're working out your colors, your washes, your sketches first. And then, you know, from there, once you're kind of getting familiar with everything, doing your smaller compositions, then you start making larger paintings as you want. It's up to you. And you can even go smaller than this too if you want to make half size. So maybe, four, you know, three inch by five inch or two inch by... Uh, three inch. You can make even minier versions of this too if you like with your paints and everything. But I think this is a good format, like a like a four by six or four by five. That seems to be really good, where you really kind of can see everything really clearly, and you're kind of using your tools, your brushes, your paints, and everything, and it it's kind of working in a good way where you're getting the feel for it, and you can kind of start enlarging things from there if you want eventually. But even small ones too, if you want to do mini versions of this, that's fine too. If that's what you like to do, you're the artist, you decide. Um, we're having a great time here, we're having fun. So let's come back once this dries 100%, and we'll come back and we'll start doing our dark darks. Okay, we are going to get started now with our darks. We're doing the glazing technique, as we said. I'm going to try to zoom in just a little more here. I want to keep the palette in view so you can see what I'm mixing. That should be good. Okay, so we started out, we used our flat brush for this painting to get some really nice uh, color onto our paper. Warms and cools, we had some greens and blues for the cools, maybe more or less greens. I don't know if I went too much. I think I did a touch of blue there, but not much, just more, mostly green. That's a cool um, green that we put in here. And then uh, we have, again, all the browns, golds, oranges, and reds here in this portion of the palette on our first light wash that we put on with our flat brush. And we got that all on really looking good. You can see the texture of the paper. Looks really nice to leave some texture on there. We did some finger painting a little bit, you know, scrub around a little bit, get some texture going. Now we're going to go in and use our uh, Simply Simmons number six round brush. Synthetic, of course, these are both synthetic brushes. And again, I always mention this. Um, uh, you hear me say this, right? I always tell everybody, if you're just starting out in watercolor, synthetic hair brushes work better because they don't fill up with as much water. So when you're using your paint brushes, you're not going to have as much water in the brushes, which would actually sometimes cause problem problems for newer artists because if you're not checking your water off, like I always mention, whenever I rinse my brush first in the water water bucket, I always dab onto a tissue or a sponge next to the water pail or my apron. I'll, I'll tap on my apron quick to take some of the water off and then go in and do my pick up my paints and mix a little bit of paints and do what I have to do. But if you have tons of water flooding in your brush and you're not checking it off on any tissue or sponge, which a lot of times people forget to do, artists forget to do that when they first start out. I hope you won't do that. I mentioned it enough times that I know, I think you're probably, I know you're following what I'm saying. So, and uh, you know, this way you don't flood out your paper, you don't flood out your paints and things. And you, you keep a nice watch on your colors, your, your washes, not too much water, um, you know, lots of paint. Especially now we're doing our darks, we don't want too much water. So I rinse my brush, tap a little water off, 
And then we go in and we say, okay, we're going to do our darks. Let's get some brown and some blue. So we're going to use some brown, some blue, some red. We'll use our reds and oranges. We'll make it a warm. So that's a brown, some reds, orange. Maybe a touch of black in there too. Blue, purple too. And if you see your, pa your paints are getting a little dry, these paints, they're so excellent, you just spray them with a little bit of water. A little bit of spritzer bottle. Just like that. Touch a spritz of water and they liven right up. And then we go back in we get some purple, reds, oranges, yellow, brown, touch of black, and more black. I think we're going to use a good, really good dark there, but you just need a little tiny bit of that black. That black goes a long way. And then now let's get in here. Let's do uh, some more red though. I'm going to get more red in there. And then we're just going to go in with our darks. And we're going to do our archway here with that first uh, dark wash like this. Okay, so we're going to do that. <clears throat> so this is perfect. You can see right away there's that powerful dark um, color, tonal value here. And, you know, you can even give it a little bit of, um, you could touch, dab a little bit of a tissue on the bottom portion. There might be some light in there like that. That looks good usually. Then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to do this top window. Kind of dark. I can see I'm looking at a reference photo, but I really can't use my reference photo to be honest. Um, I as always say I, I don't want to take take away from anyone else's artwork and things like that. So if I'm copying from somebody else's paintings, let's say, you know, I don't want to do that. So sometimes I'll use some ideas from other people's paintings. But I'm not necessarily trying to copy it or you know steal it or anything like that. I'm just we're just basically we're practicing here, so we're really that's what we're doing. We're practicing our watercolor. And uh we're not really trying to benefit from it really that much other than practicing. So and then over here I can see this is pretty dark too black okay so we got that there and again you're careful you keep your hand resting on the the board I have a really large board that I work on so I, I forget sometimes I forget to mention what I'm using here but I'm using like a really kind of like a large board it's almost like a 24 inch by 36 inch masonite board it's like an eighth inch masonite board and then I put my paper construction paper over first so that it's got a you know uh, like a layer over it so that when I put my things on here you can see just the, the paper not the board because the board's got all paint all over it and things like that and so that's what I use so since I have such a large large board here when I rest my hand down on the board it's it's way over here so I always have a place to rest my hand flat and then I can just you know my hands resting on the on the paper stable and then I can just do my brush strokes really like this and then I rinse off the brush dry it off on the paper towel or the uh, tissue and then you can even do this like this and then do a quick blot up like that that usually looks good that means lights kind of like shining into the to the windows and the doorways and this one over here this looks like an orangey yellow a little bit of an orangey yellow kind of thing over here. Like a, um, this looks like a someone has a a shade hanging on the, or it could be a piece of plywood or something. I don't know. I think it's like a shade actually. I don't think it's plywood. This is a um, looks like a very uh, beautiful area neighborhood somewhere in, in a beautiful city. You can pretend what city it might be, but I'm doing the darkest darks first now. So we're going to do another, we're going to do other glazings over this one. 
just so you kind of know. We're just trying to tackle the really, really dark darks first now. That really works out good. I'm going to get some green here. There's some really cool, there's some really cool greens up here. So I'm going to use some greens up here for the windows, some dark, dark bluish green. And then some lighter green there. And then I'm careful to keep my uh, window color above this balcony. Because we have the balcony and the uh, balusters and the railings here. So we're going to do that next. And sometimes if you have an issue, you can blot it up with a little bit of... You can lift, lift up some paint with your uh, tissue and don't worry about it. And then blue. And you can tell too, we've been painting like an hour, an hour or more. So I'm starting to get tired myself. So when you start to get tired, you don't worry about it. You take a break, you come back at it the next day. I'll press on here and get this video done so we have a good video. Um, to work from, so, you know, we all, I want to make sure you have some good work to do for this uh, weekend to work on. So I'm going to press on here and get these uh, this painting done. So you can see here, darkest darks. I'll put a little more dark dark up there on the very top of these windows. And what else? So we have some dark darks over here. Um, those are lighter. Uh, for some reason there's a dark here. And there's some... And you can kind of see I'm just having a good time here. I'm going to get some shutters on there. There we go. So we have some shutters there. And... Another shutter over here, and another over here. Here we go. And what else do we have? A lot, let's do the, let's do some of those um, brown. And I'm just using these same colors. Green, brown and green. Muddy, kind of a muddy looking color. I want to try to get these uh, shadows in under here. So these are the, These are the balusters on the and we're just going to do some shadowing under there. Okay, that's the uh, those are the balusters for the railing. And then there's some more, there's some more shadows under here. And then there's some dark greens over here. And this is some more dark darks under here. So these shadows will go right down here. And they kind of go around there. They go over here. They go over there like that. Okay, there. So these are some shadows. And I'm just trying to follow the shadow shadow patterns and these are And then I dry off some of that on a paper towel. And again here I'm going to start to do a little more quicker. I'm going to do some lighter shadows. So these are some lighter shadows here. 
that we see like that and what else do we have here we have that's good there maybe I take a little bit of splashing splash around a little bit on this page just to get a little texture going you might be thinking oh no that'll lighten up you can also dab off a little bit of the sh of the speckles but you want to get a little bit of texture going there we go and uh, what else do we have here let's um, more shadows over here lights coming from this way Okay, there's some other uh, and that looks about good um, for you know we're, we're really I'm gonna do this here I'm gonna do a couple lines for the sidewalks and all we have left now is the figures and a few other things let's do some uh, let's see, let's get some... <clears throat> okay. Uh, perfect time for a break, maybe. I'm just doing a little bit of the shadowing here. Okay, so a little bit of green here. So I'm trying to get a little bit of that green color there that looks good a little bit of green mixed in with the um, warmer colors like the oranges and reds and things that really looks good but you can't go too much just a little bit you know here and there you s we put it here we put it in this shade over here maybe a little bit there maybe a little there then we can go across here a couple more darks there then over here we're going to do that clothesline, so we're going to leave that pretty much simple like that. All right, so let's take another break. It's great to take breaks. You always hear me say that, <laughs> and always mention too. Hey, if you haven't for you know if this is your first time here again, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for coming by. I appreciate it so much. And you know if you're just starting watercolor, this is a great place to be. I always pride myself on doing all the basics, all the fundamentals of watercolor. The methods, of the tech, you know, the me methods and the techniques that you need to learn um, when you're starting. Because if you don't learn the right techniques and methods when you're first starting watercolor, it becomes frustrating, and most people give up with watercolor. But I know you're not going to give up on it because I'm kind of sharing all the fundamental basics you need um, here on my channel. And you can always go back and look up any extreme beginners a video. I've been doing them for about maybe six months now. So if you look up any Extreme Beginners, you just type in Extreme Beginners Chris Petri on your YouTube search, and you'll find all my videos. And there's not a, you know, there's like maybe about 20 now or 30 videos I have that are Extreme Begin uh, Beginners videos. And when you look at them, you can go from the very first one, you look at them by date, and you can say, okay, where's the first Extreme Beginners video that Chris did? And you look at that one, you'll see at that one, I show you everything, all the, in detail, the brushes, the palette, I explain everything in more detail, but I also keep refreshing everybody as I go with each new video. So I'm hoping you'll see that, that I'm really making an effort to, if maybe you don't do as much binge watching, you know, on um, YouTube, if you don't do a ton of watching of videos, but you somehow you found this video and you're saying, oh, where do I, what do I do next? 
If you just keep watching my videos from here going forward and you hit the subscribe button below, this way you won't lose my videos. You'll be alerted each time a new video comes out. Um, you just stick with us here each week, week after week, month after month, and after a year or two, you'll have watercolor. Really, you'll have a handle on everything, the basics of everything, and then you'll just, from there, you can do as much as you want from there. But you will have the basic fundamentals from that point. After about a year of watching my videos, you'll absolutely have that solid base of knowledge that you need because I cover those methods and techniques every week, week after week and month after month. And so we're going to come back again. And I always say, take some breaks, have fun. And, um, you know, you could, you can, what's great about watercolor, you can paint one day and then oh, two weeks later, come back and start working on it again. You don't have to do this the next day. If you want to start this painting or this painting up here, you can start it on one day and then come back a week later and start and start working on it again. Or, a, or two weeks or a month later, if you have something you're really busy and you can't get to it, you could take it at your own pace, do it at your own pace, is what I'm saying. Don't feel like you have to do this every day, but I do suggest practicing drawing with your pencil or your pens 10 to 15 minutes every day. That's the only thing I say. Please, please, please practice your pencil and pen drawing every day. Just pick it up and draw one thing a day. An apple, an orange, a pen, a paintbrush, something you look out your window, a tree, a house. Try just one thing a day for 10, 15 minutes. And as you practice drawing day by day for 10 or 15 minutes, your drawing skills will just skyrocket. So try doing that. That's really going to help you tremendously. Okay, so we're almost finished with this one. Let's come back in about five or 10 minutes. I just want to take a quick break and we'll do the figures and we'll do some of these um, uh, towels and shirts and things on the clothesline over here, which is going to make a nice little interesting... Um, uh, place for our eyes to look at for a few seconds as we're browsing around in our painting when we're looking at our beautiful artwork here. So we will be right back. All right, everybody, we're going to finish up this painting. We're going to have a great time doing it. So we're going to do our figures and we're going to do some of these. Um, this little small clothesline over here makes a little interesting feature in the painting, kind of, you know, um, dresses things up a little bit. So let's uh, start out. We're going to do maybe some figures. So I'm going to use my, uh, this is the stock brush that comes with um, this set with the Prang Oval 16 set. It's a synthetic brush again. Synthetic brushes are great for uh, newer artists because they're actually, um, they don't hold as much water. So that means you're not going to be flooding out your paintings with too much water or your palette with too much water in your paints. So just a great, great way to go. Um, I'm going to make some dark over here too, some purple and blue. So purple and blue and then some of that reddish brown. You can kind of see what we're going to do. And then we're just going to do some of the, uh, the figures here. And again, we talked about how we want to do carrot shapes. So here we're going to, we're going to have some carrot shapes like so. So that's the bottom of the carrot. And again, I always rinse my brush, dry off a little bit of water. And then we're going to do some orange and red over here. Just like that. And we have a little red and orange for the... So there's... You could have fun doing this here. So we can have a carrot shape there. And uh, a little bit of... So we have... We have the, uh, we can pick up different colors, so, you know, you try to pick up different colors and make these colors a little, you know, interesting for your, sh for your, sh um, for the figures. You know, you want to change up some colors, purples, reds, blues, um, like that. So I'm going to do that. And, uh. Just trying to do things like that, and then and I'm trying to make the little. There's a child here, and a little bit of a shadow. So there's some shadows along the bottom here of these figures. And people out in the street enjoying a sunny, beautiful, sunny day in the city s scenes here. And uh, 
again, uh, it, uh, the carrot shape works great. And this, these figures over here, I'm going to have a figure over here. I'm going to do the, like that. This person's maybe coming out of the building. And a little bit of shadow underneath the figures. Again, you can't go wrong with the, the carrot shape for the figures. So you start out kind of like a carrot shape and then come down to a point like that. And then you can make some make a, make a little small dot on the top for the heads. And another carrot shape over here. Maybe this is the, the small child here. So they're next to their parents maybe. They're kind of just enjoying the day here and they're chatting and having a good time. It's a beautiful sunny day. And that's good. We have our figures good. Then we're going we're gonna to come up and do these uh, clothesline area. So I'm going to use some of the greens and blues. So like a greenish blue, not too dark for the shadows. So let's do that. Let's get the shadows under here. And a little bit of blue maybe mixed in there and maybe a little bit of that purplish. And there's another one here. And we can even touch these up a little bit too because I think I kind of painted over them a little too much. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint around them a little bit. Um, that's what we'll do with our white. Let's come, we'll take some of our titanium white that we used before and we'll do that. We'll go over the top. Let's do some of these. Let's do that. So here you can use like gouache. You can use gouache or you can use some of that titanium white and we can get back some of those lights that we were, we kind of painted over before. So maybe we, you can kind of see how I'm doing that. I'm just doing the, just like that. So we have just a little bit of interest over there. Okay, I could have left this white paper. I should have left it. Maybe when you do this painting, you might want to put little tiny W's in these um, areas of uh, where we have these uh, towels and, and um, shirts and whatever we have on the clothesline here. If you put a W in there and you leave that white paper, it's a little easier to paint around it with the shadows and some of these other colors up here. Putting white paint on top of that isn't as good. Doesn't look as good, but you can use that for a. Um, you can do that to do a little fix up. So that's a little bit of a fix up technique you can use, adding a little white paint to something. And then here we're going to do the same thing. But this here is fine. This looks great. You just take a little bit of that yellow ochre uh, color, which is basically titanium white with a little touch of uh, the uh, gold and orange and brown mixture. So it's not straight white, it's got a little bit of a golden color. And then we just put a little couple dots of light on our, our um, figures here. That really looks good when you add some light to the tops of our figures. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to put some light on top. Like that. Like this. And that looks much better. Like that. And that's it. We have a perfectly gorgeous uh, street scene, maybe a really super bit of couple really, really dark, dark stare here and there. Like you can go in and mix up that real dark over here, which is like the uh, brown and blue and purple with some red. Get some super darks. And you can start putting in a couple really, really dark, dark accents in here um, along your 
um, painting. So this might be like the the lines here, like that, like that, and uh, you can add a little dark over here. And the more dark you kind of make things here and there, the more you see bright sunlight in the picture. So it kind of looks brighter. Like that. Pick up some more darks over here. Can you see that? And you can even go in and get some black. Some black like that. And uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to call this one complete. We have some figures. You can add some some shadowing a little bit there. And I think you'll I think you'd be very happy when you complete both of these paintings. You'll really see a beautiful landscape, a beautiful city scene with some figures you'll be tremendously happy. So I'm, I'm glad you joined along with us. Um, please uh, hit the thumbs up if you like this video and you want to see more, leave comments in the comment section, ask questions. I'm always in the comment section answering questions and, um, you know, trying to be a part of this um, process we have here. So I want to make sure I'm getting you the answers you need. If you have questions about any of the paintings we're doing, the techniques, the methods, whatever it is, um, you know, always ask questions. If you have any uh, concerns, you know, please let me know. And uh, other than that, we're going to see you on the next video very, very soon. And again, this is an Extreme Beginners series, so I'm really grateful. Uh, I'm very grateful, actually, that we're all working together um, to um, get everyone up to speed on watercolor, the techniques, the methods. And um, we're going to have a lot of great paintings ahead of us, so we'll see you on the next video. Okay? Happy painting, everybody.